It's the finale of Factions Compared Week, and we're tackling one of the most important questions in Star Wars, who's got the best stash? Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to the most important video you will ever watch. Today we're talking about one of my favorite things ever, mustaches in the Star Wars universe. This is a topic that is very personal to me. One November, I just grew a mustache, then didn't shave it for like a year. And although unfortunately I no longer have it on my face, that was one of the best years of my life. Today we'll be looking at the top dusters offered by the Rebel Alliance, the Empire, the Confederacy of Independent Systems, and of course the Republic. In judging the entries, I'll make reference to the rules used by the National Beard and Mustache Championship, which says that in selecting the best mustache, the judges will be asked to determine which contestant's facial hair best enhances his overall appearance, style, and personality. Let's start with the Empire, and I know what you're probably thinking. The Empire is heavily militaristic, all about rules, I'm sure they don't even allow facial hair. Wrong. I will say it does look like the Empire prefers sideburns more than anything. I mean, look at Chief Bass, General Tag, Admiral Mahdi, and Technician Paul Treatum, all of who are sporting very fuzzy cheeks. But we've also got a few contenders here for mustache. We've got Admiral Yularen, that one guy from the Holiday Special, and of course from Legends, Warlord Zinge, and Captain Pelion. I'll go with Pelion because I think it's the bushiest of the bunch, and really, with all the works he appears in, it gets the most screen time. I think the mustache does a good job of enhancing his overall appearance, style, and personality. It helps him stand out from Thrawn, who is totally regimented, showing a bit of the gruffer side. However, unlike Zinj, the mustache is closely cropped, showing that he's also a straight military man. The mustache is incredible and really adds to the dignified look of Pelion, who would become a very important character in the EU. Next up, we have the Rebel Alliance, and we're really swamped for choice here. There are so many Rebels with great facial hair. We've got Biggs, we've got Dodonna, we've got Lando, but in my mind, there are really two standouts, both with exceptional lip caterpillars. First, we have Ledric Fierist, who appears only for a split second in The Empire Strikes Back, which in my opinion, is a real shame. Giving him a run for his money is Rebel Officer Bob Hudsall from A New Hope. Although Hudsall features more prominently in his movie and his facial hair is incredibly extravagant, I think I prefer the beautiful horseshoe style, instantly memorable mustache of Colonel Furest. In Legends, the soldier had a fully formed backstory where he was initially a mercenary before joining the Rebel Alliance. As an officer in the Rebel military, he was responsible for coordinating ground defenses against the Imperial invasion of Hoth. He was a total badass. Not only did he orchestrate a successful evacuation against all odds, allowing the Empire to take the shield generator, but not the evacuation staging area, but he also took his men and just sprinted towards a downed AT-AT somehow surviving. And you know what? I could tell you all of that without even seeing the movie and just looking at his mustache. It's unique, one of the only horseshoe mustaches in the entire Star Wars saga. It also matches his personality perfectly. It's like someone took a really tough biker and threw him on an ice planet. I mean, look at this picture of him manning a gun turret. The fact that his character wasn't given a history after the Battle of Hoth is a real shame, and I think we, as a community, should come together and demand that from Lucas. Film. Unfortunately, now we're leaving the 70s and 80s and entering the dark era of Star Wars mustaches. Sure, facial hair still existed, but mostly it was in pure beard form. Let's start with the Republic and Dexter Jetster, who has, by far, the greasiest stash on this list. And I know what you're saying, hey, Dexter Jetster wasn't part of the Republic, he was his own private businessman. Shut up, he's included, he helped Obi-Wan Kenobi. Dexter's mustache, in my opinion, does fit his personality as the owner of some greasy spoon, but it's really not very prominent. I mean, many people don't even realize that the alien has a mustache. For one, it's competing with the sheer ridiculousness of his surroundings and the fact that he has four arms, and it's also almost the same color as his skin. I mean, that's not his fault, but it does go against him when ranking mustaches. The Republic does have good facial hair. I mean, C.O. Bibble, of course, has an amazing mustache, but I wanted someone with the mustache only, not a mustache and a beard. Yoda has sideburns in Episode 1, and of course, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and many others have full beards. Next up, we have the Confederacy of Independent Systems, and guys, I'm going to be completely honest, 
I was about to record my whole thing on who I thought had the best mustache. I didn't think the Confederacy really had any good candidates. I was just gonna go with Count Dooku until I stumbled across something glorious. I knew there must be something better out there, so I googled separatist mustache and what would you know, I found a Wikipedia article on a guy named Unger Gout. Unger Gout was from an issue of the Clone Wars comics that I may or may not have read a long time ago. I don't quite remember. So I'm not going to talk about the lore, I just want to look at that amazing mustache. So Unger is a member of the Kormai, who are basically walrus people. This helps explain his thick, prominent, and beautiful mustache. And when combined with his large and beefy frame, I think it makes a very interesting look. He sort of reminds me of a combination between actor slash Liberty Medical spokesman Wilfred Brimley and NHL coach Paul McClain. And to be frank, those are two of the most well-liked mustaches in the game. According to Wiki, his species also rides a sort of hairy worm, which is another mustache connection, and that's another point for him. With our four pieces of facial foliage out of the way, let's now rank our mustaches from worst to best. And I say worst, but really, all the whiskered entries are winners in my book. Coming in at number four is Dexter Jetster, and let's be honest, Dex never really had a chance. He's got four arms, which already destroyed distracts you from his face. The fact that his mustache is basically the same color as the rest of his body makes things fairly difficult for him, like a white man with a blonde mustache. I appreciate the effort and the greasy stash does fit his position, but he nonetheless comes in at the final spot. With what I'm sure will be a controversial pick, at number 3 is the walrus man of the CIS. And I don't mean this walrus man, I mean this walrus man. His mustache is huge, it's incredibly extravagant, and I suppose suppose it fits what I've read on Wikipedia about him. However, at this point, it's almost such a cliche that, I don't know, there's something about it that I don't quite like. We've got a full mustachioed species, and I don't think any one mustache wearer is as iconic as the following two entries. At number two is the second most famous mustache in the galaxy. We're not talking about Lando, who has the number one position, instead we're talking Admiral Pelion. It's famous, but famous in and of itself doesn't suggest quality. However, Pelion backs up the talk with a thick, but also well-cut stash. A stash that says not only that I've been in the military for a long time, but also that I can probably chug a beer faster than you. It doesn't however reach the sheer levels of awesomeness as Colonel Forrest. I don't think there's been a mustache in the history of mankind that has so well matched its wearer. And as I said before, if I had to pick a man out of a lineup to lead the evacuation of Hoth on the ground, I would have picked him. He only thinly beats out Pelion, and I think both men basically have the perfect mustaches with very few improvements that they could make. Jetster and the Walrus come in close, but these two are in a league of their own. That being said, in Star Wars, all mustaches are subservient to one. Until next time, may the Force be with you.